Um, okay. So, hi, my name is Sam So. I'm from Rutgers University, and today I'm presenting exactly what he said, story print and interactive visualization of stories, which was done in a collaborative effort between ETH Zurich, Rutgers University, and Disney Research. Uh, now, for stories, the primary data that we were looking at were screenplays, which are for complex, multifaceted data sets. Um, but unfortunately, the raw consumption of this type of information is time, in, uh, time intensive in the case of reading a script or viewing a film, and can also be too uninformative. For example, reading a film synopsis or viewing a, f uh, a movie trailer. Um, and this makes the data on its own unsuitable for quick analyses of character prominence, setting changes, and emotional shifts. So we believe that there is a need for an effective visualization in order to, to accomplish this. Um, now, there has been prior work in the area of understanding you know, setting simultaneously with time and different aspects of stories, but none of them have addressed our particular objectives. So I'll just go over very briefly these different approaches. Uh, one of them, the first, is the archetypal movie narrative charts, which plot character presence on a time axis, uh, time x axis and setting y axis, as you can see in the figure. Um, story cake, which is almost like a hierarchical version of this, and one of the things they choose to, to showcase their visualization is inception, which is clearly very layered. We also have story curves, which doesn't focus as much on setting as it does on the difference between story time and narrative time. Um, and this is all in the area of storyline visualization. More broadly, in visual analytics, we have approaches like Tiara, which use topic analysis techniques to visually summarize documents, and in general, Rivers, which visualize time-based data and facilitate the detection of patterns. The image that you see here is actually from Tiara, uh, visualizing the reason for visit field in emergency room records. And the, uh, I, you can't really see it, but the x-axis is for time. Yeah. And as I, as I just mentioned, uh, none of these are trying to accomplish what we have done, so yes. Uh, to this end, in order to, to accomplish this goal, we, we leverage the uh, extraction of metadata from film scripts. Uh, for example, we can take the setting, character, and dialogue information, dialogue that corresponds to the characters, and output an interactive visual summary. Now, in particular, what we do is we use concentric rings along a circular time axis to visualize the settings and the characters. And this has been shown to be preferable for highlighting relationships and patterns within data. Um, now, the innermost ring, the very colorful ring, is for the setting. And this is partitioned into different segments according to different scenes. The colors that you see on this ring correspond to unique settings. Uh, and if two different scenes in two different times have the same setting, they'll be uh, in the same color. In addition to that, the length, the arc length of a segment corresponds to the duration of the scene. And by hovering over the segment, you can actually highlight the outer arcs uh, so that you can easily identify the characters that are present in that scene. Now, these outer rings are the character arcs. And the order in which they appear from the center of the visualization to the outside is in decreasing order of character prominence, meaning the characters with the most lines are shown the closest to the center. Um, and the Gray, the dark gray segments that you see highlighted here are indicators for character presence. So in a given scene, if a character is speaking, that's uh, the only criteria to show this. Um, and uh, now you may notice something very unintuitive, which is that as the radius of the arc increases, the character prominence is said to decrease. However, if you just knowing how these, just seeing this visualization, it's clear that uh, if all of these arcs were a fixed width, then the area of the width would increase uh, almost counterintuitively. So to counteract this, we simply decrease the thickness of the arc to focus more of the attention on the center. Now, this previous in information really tells the what. Is the character present in a given scene? Uh, and in general, how much do they speak? This. Uh, 
what we also want to show is the how, which is why we have a character, uh, an emotion overlay that colors the segments uh, for the scenes that characters are present in. And in order to color them, what we do is we do a sentence by sentence uh, sentiment analysis in a given scene. And we average all of these values, uh, which gives us a range between negative one and one. And we map this to a range between red and green. Um, and that's exactly what you see in this figure. But in practice, we do recommend using red and blue as the hue range, just for colorblind viewers. Um, and if you click one of the character arcs, it'll give you a focused view of the emotional experience. Uh, this, so far, what I've described is uh, all you need for a single story print visualization. But the utility of these visualizations comes from comparisons. I'll be jumping into that, but right before I do, I want to talk about uh, design alternatives. Um, previously, I mentioned the issue with the thickness of the arc as the radius increases. Uh, this can be avoided by linearizing the time axis. Uh, and these are two examples of episodes from the TV show House, and we show a linearized version of this. Um, now, for fine-grained analysis uh, of our visualization, uh, we posit that this would be very beneficial because it's more intuitive to zoom and pan in this type of visualization as opposed to a you know a circular time axis. But we elected to use this because it has a better concentration of the information that we hope to convey. So that's the reason for not using this linear design alternative. Now, on to actual comparisons. This is uh, showing a comparison between two original uh, story prints, so no, no alterations, no overlays, and this is between an original script and an edit of the script. Now, immediately, it's very clear that four of the less prominent characters have had a scene at the end of the film removed. Um, but one of the problems, well, actually, there, there are a couple of problems with this approach on its own. It's that there are some inconspicuous changes that can go unnoticed. For example, if you see the, the five o'clock position, there's a tiny change in the setting axis and also in the character arcs where there was one scene included. Um, and in addition to that, the character arc for Elizabeth, um, I can't remember the end, right here, this has been shortened as well. But these may not be readily clear. So in order to uh, solve this issue, we have created a difference overlay uh, that um, highlights only the changes between two uh, story print visualizations. And here you can see this, the bottom right hand, uh, bottom right-hand corner of the five o'clock position, it is now very apparent that there has been a change there. Uh, and also, uh, also we see at the top, um, for the four less prominent characters, you see that their scenes are highlighted in red, indicating that they've had lines removed from a scene. And uh, likewise, it has been replaced by the addition of other characters uh, in blue. And once again, uh, we do recommend red and blue in practice. Um, yeah. Now, this is just a concrete example of what you can infer from these visualizations. Uh, I'll just give a very simple example of the type of uh, thing you can infer from this. Uh, what we can see here, I'll highlight it right here. Um, it's apparent from this visualization that the protagonists in the story, which have been highlighted in purple, all appear together at the end of the movie. That's just a very simple observation that this uh, story print affords. Uh, and this is between three episodes of House, we observe that for three of the characters, um, three of the prominent characters, there is a shared scene presence that is consistently observed. And you can tell this by uh, the, I guess the, with respect to a given angle on the visualization, uh, these three appear very consistently together. For, a, for the evaluation of story print, we uh, had two user studies. One was a large user study uh, for naive users to test usability and intuitiveness, uh, for which we used Amazon Mechanical Turk. And the other was a small focused uh, study on expert users uh, to test the utility for film experts. For the naive user study, we had a 15 minute online survey for 100 users, and we asked various questions that you can see in this table. 
uh, regarding just some example visualizations that we showed. Uh, and the result can be seen here. Uh, we, we also ask, in, in addition to these questions, we ask the uh, users to, to rate the difficulty, which is what you see in the top row and the second row, the standard deviation of the difficulty. Uh, and you see uh, the percentages that uh, the correct, uh, the number of, the percentages of correctly answered questions by the users. And it seems that the users comprehend emotion, setting, and character of prominence, but struggle with the comparative analyses. And something that might be very shocking is the zero. Uh, so 100 users were able to, none of them were able to answer this completely correctly. The reason why is because this was a multiple choice question and we weren't uh, considering partial correctness. So that's why. Mm -hmm. Now for our user study with the experts, uh, we had an hour long interactive interviews with each of them who were five active screenwriters and we asked these types of, uh, we asked questions about setting, character prominence, individual character emotion, and with these many questions. And uh, just uh, in general, Nearly all of the questions were answered correctly by all five users, but some of the questions that did not have total agreement or total uh, success were pinpointing the scene with the most characters present, noticing the two characters are, were swapped, uh, noticing that a character became more prominent, and noticing the addition of a small new scene. Uh, additionally, unanimous agreement uh, was had that the difference overlay is more helpful than the side-by-side -side comparison, but a majority of the users uh, would have liked to be able to toggle between the two options. Uh, four out of five stated that this type of tool would be useful during the writing process, either in their personal use uh, or in a collaborative setting. And one out of five did not see any practical use. And some quotes are, uh, you know, once you know the rules, it's very easy. And regarding comparison, right away, it's very easy. Um, StoryPrint is an interactive visualization tool for creative storytelling that facilitates individual and comparative structural analyses, as I showed, and it conveys setting, character presence, character prominence, and character emotion throughout the story. Um, and based on the user studies that we conducted, we've concluded that there, uh, that towards this end, we have been successful. For future work, uh, we hope to remove the limitation on the parsing end. We, we are specifically looking at film scripts and it is very rigid. Uh, we don't have much flexibility, so uh, we would like to improve the robustness. And in addition to that, we would like to investigate better ways to mitigate the visual distortion, uh, meaning the, uh, like the, the need to decrease the width of arcs as characters become less prominent. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. Um, Oh, okay. So with question time, you have the first one. Yeah. Thank you. Um, in terms of your evaluation, you mostly looked for correctness. Uh, I was wondering, did they have a, a specific time, their answers timed, or they could take as much time as they wanted to answer the questions? Because if they did, it would be also interesting to see how long it took them to find the right answer. Because if you have a lot of time, but it takes a lot of time, maybe it says that it could be, the visualization could be improved to make it more efficient for them to find the answers. Right. And you know, if they did have a variable time, did you see any difference between the experts from the small group and the users from the Mechanical Turk? So unfortunately, we did not do this. We did not analyze the, I guess, the, the time it took for them to, to view the visualization and answer the questions, but this is actually something very interesting, which uh, thank you for bringing that up. Uh, we will look into it. Okay, questions? It's a beautiful visualization. I wonder, did you happen to compare the, the circular axis with the linear axis? Um, personally, I, I found it maybe easier to, to answer those questions using the linearized axis. The design decision was actually made before the study, so unfortunately we did not you know, pilot an experiment, but it would be valuable to really concretize our, our hypothesis. So thank you for addressing that. Well, question, okay, in the back. Oh, no, not you, sorry. You will be next. We have another, yes. Sorry, I saw the hand first. Here you go. 
Thank you. Uh, can you elaborate on the interactive parts of your visualization? And uh, I would like to know if you can actually change blocks of the script to different parts of the timeline of the story. Uh, what do you mean by lo oh, well, for the first? Oh, okay, so so the interaction that we provide is simply uh, you know clickable arcs. So if you like, for example, in the well, this is the the first example. If you click on a given uh, segment of a scene in the in the setting ring, uh, it highlights and then gives you the actual name, which in this case Tom's bedroom. And in addition to that, uh, once you have the uh, emotion overlay, you can click all of these to get more focused views. Um, the interaction, I will admit, is rudimentary. Our main focus was on the visualization itself. Um, so the, inter the interaction serves to, to transition between different ways to visualize, but uh, it's not... No, no. So I, I know this uh, visualization may have been a bit misleading. This was just like to, to convey that. Okay, more question, and an apology to our student volunteer. So he's actually trying to help help me bring the mic, and I thought he's asking a question. So, but thank you for the offer. I, I like the exercise. So I'm going to run around. Any other questions? <laughs> yes. Any other questions? Oh, actually, I had one question though, before we switch to the next speaker. So. Um, in the result, you said like one out of five uh, of the experts is that they see no practical use, and then there's the other four who, who have some use. So that, do you dig deeper about like why that one person says no, not useful, and then the other says it's useful? Yeah. Uh, so why they, yeah. they choose? Yeah, correct. Uh, I cannot recall off the top of my head, unfortunately. Um, so unfortunately, I can't answer that. No, that's fine. Okay, great. So let's uh, give the speakers a round of applause again. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs>